been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 301. Now this is section N of a multi-part instruction. The only ones who have the right to claim preeminent domain is Elohim and those who are called and elected to inherit and inhabit the earth. That is every member of the body of Christ. Build your capacity to receive the exceeding abundantly above all that you can imagine through the word of God and the spirit of God. Throughout our program today, you are going to understand that you are blessed to be a blessing. So this first section will address because God blessed you to be a blessing, you are now empowered to bless. What God has blessed, no one can curse. And what God has blessed, no one can reverse. Proverbs 10, 22 from the Amplified Bible says, the blessing of the Lord brings true riches and he adds no sorrow to it for it comes as a blessing from God. Let's see what Jesus has done for us to know that he moved us from the curse of the law to be blessed and the blessing flows as far as the curse is found. In Galatians, the third chapter, the 13th and the 14th verse from the Amplified Bible says, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree cross, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles, and Gentiles will be considered those who are non Jews so that we would all receive the realization of the promise of a Holy Spirit through faith. Also in Galatians, the third chapter, the 16th verse from the Amplified Bible says, Now the promises in the covenants were decreed to Abraham and to his seed. God does not say, and to seeds, descendants, heirs, as if referring to many persons, but as to one and to your seed, and that word seed is capitalized, who is none other than Christ. Let's also look in Galatians, the third chapter, the 23rd through the 29th verse from the Amplified Bible. It says, now before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, perpetually imprisoned in preparation for the faith that was destined to be revealed with the result that the law has become our tutor and our disciplinary to guide us to Christ so that we might be justified. That is declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God by faith. That word justified in Greek means innocent. So in Jesus Christ, we are innocent. Then it goes on to say, but now that faith has come. We are no longer under the control and authority of a tutor 
and disciplinarian. For you who are born again have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified, and all children of God set apart for his purpose with full rights and privileges through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, into a spiritual union with the Christ, the anointed, have clothed yourselves with Christ. That is, you have taken on the characteristics and values. There is now no distinction in regard to salvation, neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female for you who believe are all one in Christ. No one can claim a spiritual superiority for if you belong to Christ, if you are in him, then you are Abraham's descendants and spiritual heirs according to God's promise. So we receive our inheritance because we have faith in Jesus and we belong to him when we are saved. Let's also look in Galatians, the second chapter, the 16th verse from the Amplified Bible. Yet we know that a man is not justified and placed in right standing with God by the works of the law but only through faith in God's beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And even we as Jews have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. By observing the law, no one will be justified, declared free of the guilt of its sin and its penalty. The Amplified Bible also has footnotes for that same scripture, Galatians, the second chapter, the 16th verse. And I want to read that to you. It says, being justified is a legal or judicial declaration of righteousness. Justification has two parts. The first part says being declared free of blame, acquitted of sin, not guilty, Believers are justified because Jesus Christ personally assumed the guilt for our sin on the cross. And the second part is God declares the person righteous that is placed in a position of right standing with him. A person may not be made righteous by his personal behavior, no matter how good or by the declaration of any other human being. So you see that this is important. If we're going to have the preeminent domain, we need to know that we can stand before him and ask for the blessing that he has already pronounced upon us. What is the recurring thing we like to share with you throughout our program today? Recognize you are heavily endorsed and reinforced by the kingdom of God that is already within you. Always remain in a position of honor and humility before the Lord. Recognize you are supernaturally endowed with exousia authority and dunamis power. Release your God-given dominion to work in you at the fullest strength to govern the earth by faith. Recover all loss stolen and destroyed property and take new ground. I'll be right back after this message from our program sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, 
concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. You are blessed to be a blessing because God blessed you to be a blessing. You are not empowered to bless. What God has blessed, no one can curse. And what God has blessed, no one can reverse. Proverbs 10, 22 from the Amplified Bible says, the blessing of the Lord brings true riches and he adds no sorrow to it for it comes as a blessing from God. Now we're going to give you some definitions of the word blessed and blessed. And they are the same word in Hebrew, barak, which means to kneel, bless. It also means abundantly blessed, actually blessed, blessed is blessed, bless me indeed. It means to congratulate, to greet, to kneel down, persisted in blessing, pronounce blessing, salute, surely bless, and thank. Now we're going to look in the 1828 dictionary by Webster, which is called the American Dictionary of the English Language. And you can find it online and download it free. And the word blessed in the dictionary means made happy or prosperous, extolled, pronounced happy. And that is in the participial passive. And then it also means as an adjective, happy, prosperous in worldly affairs. So if you have a, a assignment to move into the world system that God has placed you there, you will have success there. You'll be prosperous there. Enjoying spiritual happiness and the favor of God is another one. And enjoying heavenly felicity. Also the word bless as a transitive past tense and participle present means blessed or blessed. And that's B-L-E-S-T. And I'm giving you some examples that he has in the dictionary. To pronounce a wish of happiness to one, to express a wish or a desire of happiness. And in Genesis, the 28th chapter, the third verse is, and Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. And so we're showing this is the father's blessing on the son. And then another definition is to make happy, to make successful, to prosper in temporal concerns. As we are blessed with peace and plenty. And the scripture he has is, Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter, the fourth verse, which says, the Lord thy God will bless thee in all thou doest. And then also it means to make happy in a future life. In Revelation, the 14th chapter, 13th verse says, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Another definition from the dictionary is to set apart or consecrate to holy purposes to make or pronounce a holy. And in Genesis, the second chapter, the third verse is, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Another definition is to consecrate by prayer, to invoke a blessing. And then Jesus said in Luke, the ninth chapter and the 16th verse, and Jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up, to heaven, he blessed them. And then another definition is to praise, to glorify for benefits received. And then Psalm, the 103rd chapter, the first verse says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. So you can see a variety of the word Barak being used. That is blessed, 
or blessed. Blessing God, blessing ourselves, blessing others, blessing places and things. Now let's look at the word blessing. It is baraka, and that is in Hebrew, and it means a benefit, blessed, blessing, blessings, generous, gift, most blessed, peace, a present. Now that's what it is in Hebrew. Now let's also look at the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. The word blessing that is used as a participle present tense means making happy, wishing happiness to, praising, extolling, and consecrating by prayer. If it's used as a noun blessing, it is benediction, a wish of happiness pronounce a prayer employing happiness upon another. Some examples that Webster used is a solemn prophetic benediction in which happiness is desired, invoked, or foretold. In Deuteronomy 33rd chapter, and the first verse says, this is a blessing wherewith Moses blessed the children of Israel. Another Webster's definition is among the Jews a present, a gift, either because it was attended with kind wishes for the welfare of the giver or because it was a means of increasing happiness. So in Genesis, the 33rd chapter, the 11th verse, this is what Jacob said to his brother Esau. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee. So what you can see here that whether we are blessed or whether we receive a blessing that we use our mouth. So let's look at a verse to help us direct our speech. We use the word of God to put in our heart, but we want the word of God to come out of our mouth. In Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse from the names of God, Bible says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love to talk will have to eat their own words. So we have to understand, we have to watch everything that's coming out of our mouth because we use our words to create just like Elohim use their words to create the earth as well as us. Now in our program today, you're gonna to enjoy the music of Keith McKelly as he presents Loved Me. The Lord wants us to recognize as well as realize every blessing that he has pronounced upon us, everything he done to give us Jesus to remove the curse from us, it's because he loved us and he wanted us, not just for now, but he wanted us forever. So let's hear Loved Me, Keith McKelly, and I'll be right back. Mm -hmm.
Visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out. And this is section three. And I will continue to address you are blessed to be a blessing because God blessed you to be a blessing. You are not empowered to bless. What God has blessed, no one can curse. And what God has blessed, no one can reverse. In Proverbs, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse from the Amplified Bible says, The blessing of the Lord brings true riches, and he adds no sorrow to it, for it comes as a blessing from God. In Genesis, the first chapter, the 22nd verse from the Living Bible, it shows how God created the birds of the air, the fish in the sea, and those creeping things upon the earth. And this is what he did, and this is what he said. And this God, in this context, is Elohim. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit. And this is so God created great sea animals in every sort of fish and every kind of bird. And he looked at them with pleasure and blessed them all. He says, multiply and stock the oceans. He told them and to the birds, he said, let your numbers increase, fill the earth. And then when he made man, and that is in Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th through the 28th verse, we're going to use the living Bible. It said, then God said, speaking of Elohim, let us make a man, someone like ourselves to be the master of 
all life upon the earth and in the skies and in the seas. So God made man like his maker. Like God did God make man, man and made did he make them. And God blessed them and told them, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. You are masters of the fish, the birds, and all the animals. And the footnote says, a man, literally men, someone like ourselves that was let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let's also take that last verse, the 28th verse from Genesis, the first chapter, and look at it through the eyes of the King James Version. It says, and God blessed them, speaking of Elohim, and God said unto them, this is man and maid. He says, be fruitful, that is, be productive, and multiply, that is, reproductive. He said, and replenish, that is, restock the earth, to do, that is, restrain it. And he says, have dominion. And that is the authority and power that is in the preeminent domain because we're working with God. We can't do that by ourselves. He says, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And then in Genesis, the second chapter, the first through the third verse from the Living Bible says, now, at last, the heavens and earth were successfully completed with all that they contained. So on the seventh day, having finished his work, God seized from this work he had been doing. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was a day when he seized this work work of creation. So it's showing that within our time, we need to have a Sabbath day where we're setting apart because it is holy unto the Lord. And it also helps us to be revived and renewed. And then in Genesis, the ninth chapter, the first verse from the living Bible says, God blessed Noah and his sons and told them to have many children and to repopulate the earth. So this was after the flood. And then it says in Genesis, the ninth chapter, the 24th through the 27th verse from the Living Bible. When Noah awoke from his drunken stupor and learned what had happened, and what Ham, his younger son, had done, he cursed Ham's descendants. And so what happened is that instead of covering his father up, he looked on his father's private area and him in that state and left him the same way. And this is a curse be upon the Canaanites. This is what Noah swore. And he said to Ham descendants, may they be the lowest of slaves to the descendants of Shem and Jephah, which is the other two sons. And then Noah said, God bless Shem and may Canaan be his slave. God bless Jephah and let him share the prosperity of Shem and let Canaan be his slave. But even though the father, which is Noah, placed a curse on Ham, when Ham and his descendants come into the Lord, then the blessing will flow as far as the curse is found because they'll say, in the name of Jesus, I am blessed. What is showing is what's ever in your natural bloodline can be reversed when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and you go before the 
throne of grace and ask all the curse to be removed so the blessing can flow instead. We have to know that there is a way to live blessed, to be a blessing, and to bless. Bless God, bless ourselves, bless others. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there, basking in the sun, and all of a sudden, I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing. Not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section four. And I will continue to address you are blessed to be a blessing because God blessed you to be a blessing. You are now empowered to bless what God has blessed. No one can curse what God has blessed. No one can reverse Proverbs 10, 22 from the Amplified Bible says, The blessing of the Lord brings true riches, and he adds no sorrow to it, for it comes as a blessing from God. Now we're going to look at Abraham's story, and that is in Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first through the third verses from the Living Bible. God had told Abraham, Leave your own country behind you and your own people and go to the land I will guide you to. If you do, I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous and you will be a blessing to many others. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you and the entire world will be blessed because of you. Now this is Abraham when he was still named Abram. He was still living at home with his wife among his father even at the age of 75. So God is speaking to him even though his father was a idol worshiper and he was actually selling idols to others. And this is the footnote that from this verse in Genesis, the 12th chapter. And it says what God is saying, that you will be a blessing to many others, or I will make your name so famous that it will be used to pronounce blessings on others. And then it says the entire world will be blessed because of you. That is the nations will bless themselves because of you. So now, because we're in Christ, we are considered Abraham's seed and heirs of the promise by faith. Let's also look in Genesis, the 14th chapter, and the 17th through the 20th verse from the Living Bible. And Abraham, when he was still named Abram, it says, And as Abram returned from his strike against Chedor Naamor and the other kings at the valley of Shabar, later called King's Valley, and the king of Sodom came out to meet him, and Melchizedek, which is a king of righteousness, the king of Salem, Jerusalem, which is a king of peace, who was a priest of God, the God of the highest heaven, brought Abram bread and wine. This is show the communion. And then Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. It says the blessing of the supreme God, creator of heaven and earth upon you, Abram. And then it says, and blessed be God who delivered your enemies over to you. So you can see the double blessing, the blessing that was upon Abraham uh, that Melchizedek pronounced as well as blessing God. You see, there must be a blessing that is spoken that brings 
heaven to earth and earth to heaven. And that was it for Abram at that point. Now you have to understand this, that Melchizedek, is considered a type of Christ because he had no descendants and there's no record of his birth or death. So this is in the Old Testament when Jesus was actually making visits in the earth to the inhabitants as assigned by God. And it said, then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the loot, which means he gave them the spoils of war. It's showing that Abraham was tithing unto God through Melchizedek. Let's also look in Genesis, the 17th chapter, the first through the 22nd verse from the Living Bible. And we're talking about now a covenant. So anytime I say that it is a contract, actually it is a covenant from the King James Version even though we're going to read from the Living Bible, and that is a divine constitution of guaranteed pledges, God's pledge to us and our pledge to God. When Abram was 99 years old, God appeared to him and told him, I am the Almighty, obey me and live as you should. I will prepare a contract between us, guaranteeing to make you into a mighty nation. In fact, you shall be a father of not only one nation, but a multitude of nations. Abram fell face downward in the dust as God talked to him. Because remember the word bless or blessed means to kneel. So this is showing that he was kneeling before God in worship as God talked to him. And then God said, what's more, I'm changing your name. It is no longer Abram, which means exalted father, but Abraham, father of nation, for that is what you should be. So even though God had blessed him, he's blessing him at another level that was higher than he had at that point. And then God says, I have decreed it. So when God is saying he's decreeing something over you, it means, and it came to pass. And he says, and I will give you millions of descendants who will form many nations. Kings shall be among your descendants. And I will continue this agreement or covenant between us. That is God and Abraham generation after generation forever for it shall be between me and you and your children as well. It is a contract that I shall be your God and the God of your posterity, which is future generations. And that would include us. And I will give all this land of Canaan to you and them forever. And I will be your God. And then God says, your part of the contract or covenant is to obey its terms. You personally and all your posterity have this continued responsibility. That is every male among you will be circumcised. And that is physically the foreskin of your private areas will be cut off. And this will be the proof that you and they accept this covenant. Every male shall be circumcised on the eighth day after birth. This applies to every foreign born slave as well as to everyone born in your household. This is a permanent part of this contract or covenant and it applies to all your posterity, the future generations, and all must be circumcised. Your bodies will thus be marked as participants in my everlasting covenant. Anyone who refuses these terms will be cut off from his people for they have violated my contract or covenant. Then God said regarding Sarai, your wife, her name is no longer Sarai, but Sarah, which means princess. And I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly and make her the mother of nations. Many kings shall be 
among your posterity. Then Abraham threw himself down in worship before the Lord, but inside he was laughing in disbelief. Me be a father? He said in amazement. Me, 100 years old, and Sarah to have a baby at 90? And Abraham said to God, yes, do bless Ishmael. Now, Ishmael was born by a bondwoman to him that Sarah gave to him because she was barren. And God says, no, that isn't what I said. Sarah shall bear you a son. And you are to name him Isaac, which means laughter. And I will sign my covenant with him forever and with his descendants. And as for Ishmael, all right, I will bless him also just as you have asked me to. I will cause him to multiply and become a great nation. Twelve princes shall be among his posterity. But my contract, my covenant is with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah next year at about this time. And that ended the conversation and God left. So you can see that God was very clear of how he was dealing with Abraham because he changed his name because your name is significant as to what your present your future looks like. And he's saying, I'm naming you that so we can move you on. Now on our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Keith Kelly as he presents, what kind of man would I be? You see, he's looking out at if he had stayed the same way before our salvation, what would have happened to him? But he really understands that now as a reborn that Christ redeemed his life from the curse of the law and now he is the blessed of God. So we can ask ourselves, what kind of man would I be? What kind of woman would I be? So now we know that we are new creation in Christ when we give our lives to Christ. So let's hear what kind of man would I be? Keith Kelly, and I'll be right back.
Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section five, and I will continue to address you are blessed to be a blessing because God blessed you to be a blessing. You are now empowered to bless. What God has blessed, no man can curse. What God has blessed, no one can reverse. Proverbs, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse from the Amplified Bible, the Blessing of the Lord brings true riches and he adds no sorrow to it for it comes as a blessing from God. We're going to take a look at Genesis, the 18th chapter, the 16th through the 33rd verse from the Amplified Bible. And this is when God came to Abraham, but he was on assignment. So he was going to meet with Abraham first before he was going to to assignment with the two angels he brought with him. Then the men stood up from their mill and started on toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them part of the way. And this is what God asked Abraham. Should I hide my plan from Abraham? For Abraham shall become a mighty nation and he shall be a source of blessing for all the nations of the earth. And I picked him out to have godly descendants and a godly household, men who are just and good, so that I can do for him all I have promised. So the Lord told Abraham, I've heard that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah are utterly evil and that everything they do is wicked. I'm going down to see whether these reports are true or not. Then I will know. So the other two went on toward Sodom and these are the angels, but the Lord remained with Abraham a while. Then Abraham approached the Lord and said, will you kill good and bad alike? Suppose you find 50 godly people there, speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah, within the city. Will you destroy it and not spare it for their sakes? That wouldn't be right. Surely you wouldn't do such a thing to kill the godly with the wicked. Why you would be treating goodly and wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth be fair? And God replied, if I find 50 godly people there, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again. Since I have begun, let me go on and speak further to the Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. Suppose that there are only 45. Would you destroy the city for the lack of five? And God said, I will not destroy it if I find 45. Then Abraham went further with his request. Suppose there are only 40. And God replied, I won't destroy it if there are 40. Please don't be angry, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak, suppose only 30 are found there. And God replied, I won't do it if there are 30 there. Then Abraham said, since I have dared to speak to God, let me continue. Suppose there are only 20. God said, then I won't destroy it for the sake of 20. Finally, Abraham said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak but this once more. Suppose only 10 are found. Then God said, then for the sake of 10, I won't destroy it. And the Lord went on his way when it finished his conversation with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his tent. So we have to understand that if we want to heaven on earth and we want to see what God has for us, then we need to know we have the call an election to intercede before God for ourselves, for others, and for those who need the intercession that may be in our midst. And let's see what happened. In 
Genesis, the 19th chapter, the 23rd through the 25th verses from the Names of God Bible. The sun had just risen over the land as Lot came to Zor. Then Yahweh made burning sulfur and fire rain out of heaven on Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed those cities, the whole plain, and all who lived in the cities, whatever grew on the ground. But the only ones who the two angels led out was Lot and his wife and his two daughters. There were only four, but because Lot's wife looked back, she was turned to a pillow's thought at that point. She disobeyed what she's supposed to do. So actually it was only three that came out of that city. Now the word Yahweh in Hebrew means he is the one who continually and increasingly shows himself as self-existent. We know that God is true. He wants us to recognize and realize because he desires a relationship with us on a personal level. But Sodom and Gomorrah totally ignored what God had for them to do because they were in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that city, the whole city, was dedicated to homosexuality and which is a sin against God and how he made us because anything that does not reproduce, God didn't make. It was the devil who moved them to do such wickedness before the Lord. So he made sure that he had personal evidence himself to see what was going on. And even in our lives, he is the only one that can see our hearts. So he knows that we have a heart toward him or we have a heart against him. So are we blessing ourselves or are we cursing ourselves? Actually, Sodom and Gomorrah were cursing themselves. But that doesn't have to be you because we use our words to bless now that we know that we can have the best and that's Jesus Christ. But if you don't have Jesus Christ as your personal savior, now is the time that you can ask him to come into your heart. Why don't you say this prayer to me? So dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of every transgression and that you would cover every sin and then you would not impute any iniquity to me and that in my spirit you find no gout that I ask you to cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus because I know then I'll be cleansed and I'll be the temple for you to come and dwell in. So I'm asking you, Jesus, to come in my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I know that all things are passed away and all things are new. And now I'm the newest creation in the body of Christ. And I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. We'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now, let's return to many portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Welcome back to King's Portion, and thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section six. And I continue to address, you are blessed to be a blessing because God blessed you to be a blessing. You are now empowered to bless. What God has blessed, no one can curse. And what God has blessed, no one can 
reverse. Proverbs 10, 22 from the Amplified Bible says, the blessing of the Lord brings true riches and he adds no sorrow with it for it comes as a blessing from God. We're going to look at in Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And this is when the Lord had come to Abraham to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. And this is from Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the 6th through the 18th verse from the Living Bible. Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering upon Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the knife and the flint for striking a fire. So the two of them went on together. Father, Isaac asked, we have the wood and the flint to make the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham replied, God will see to it, my son. And that means Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. And then when they arrived at the place where God had told Abraham to go, he built an altar and placed the wood in order, ready for the fire, and then tied Isaac and laid him on the altar over the wood. And Abraham took the knife and lifted it up to plunge it into his son to slay him. At that moment, the angel of the Lord shouted to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham answered, yes, Lord, lay down the knife. Don't hurt the lad in any way. The angel said, for I know that God is first in your life. You have not withheld even your beloved son from me. Then Abraham noticed a ram caught by its horns in a bush. So he took the ram and sacrificed it instead of his son as a burnt offering on the altar. Abraham named the place Jehovah provides, Jehovah Jireh. And it still goes by that name to this day. You can see that Abraham had preeminent domain because he named the place something different than it was before they got there. Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. and says, I, the Lord, have sworn by myself that because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your beloved son from me, I will bless you with incredible blessings and multiply your descendants into countless thousands and millions like the stars above you in the sky and like the sands along the seashore. They shall conquer their enemies and your offspring, speaking of us, will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth, all because you have obeyed me. So when he was talking about seed, it was talking about Jesus being the seed and that because of Jesus, we have the blessing for all who are in Christ are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now let's look in Genesis, the 24th chapter, the first verse from the living Bible says, and Abraham was now a very old man and God blessed him in every way. So that means in any area, in every area that he was blessed. And then it says, then in Genesis, the 25th chapter, the fifth through the eighth verses from the living Bible, Abraham deeded everything he owned to Isaac. However, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them off into the east away from Isaac. Then Abraham died at the ripe old age of 175. Now, so we can see that our portion is in Christ and is linked to Abraham. But God can bless us, but we can end up cursing ourselves. So this last scripture from James, the third chapter, the first through the 12th verse from the Living Bible will help us to change what we say. If you don't want it, don't call it. And if you call and you don't want it, 
Say, in the name of Jesus, um, I renounce that wicked speech and I pronounce that it is a crop failure and never reproduce in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. So let's listen to this verse. Dear brothers, and we'll say, and sisters, don't be too eager to tell others their faults, for we all make many mistakes. And when we teachers of religion who should know better do wrong, our punishment will be greater than it would be for others. If anyone can control his tongue, it proves that he has perfect control over himself in every other way. We can make a larger horse turn around and go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even though the winds are strong. So also the tongue is a small thing. But what enormous damage it can do. A great forest can be set on fire by one tiny spark, and the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of wickedness and poisons every part of the body, and the tongue is set on fire by hell and can turn our whole lives into a blazing flame of destruction and disaster, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, even though it may not have been that sin. Men have trained or can train every kind of animal or bird that lives and every kind of reptile and fish, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is always ready to pour out deadly poisons. Sometimes it praises our Heavenly Father and sometimes it breaks out into curses against men who are made like God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Dear brothers and sisters, surely this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out first with fresh water and then with bitter water? Can you pick olives from a fig tree or figs from a grapevine? No, you can't draw fresh water from a salty pool. So we'll make sure that we understand that so we can keep in line how we should use our mouth to bless what God has blessed and allow him to have the right of way in our hearts as well as our mouths. How we like to leave this program today. Enlarge your territory to bring heaven to earth. Enlarge your heart to receive God's vision and provision. Enlarge your mouth over the enemy and give him no room to cause any division. Make it impossible for Satan to ever breach your property line. Be the triple threat that employs, number one, the word of God, both locals and rhema, and number two, the blood of the lamb, and number three, the name of Jesus. This is Catherine Joy Foster for King's Portion, where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.